You know, sometimes on this channel, I'll do big builds and other times I'll do tool reviews and hints and tips. But like any other homeowner, every now and again, something comes along that's a bit of an emergency, which you just really need to get on and tackle. And today is one of those days. Come and have a look at my entrance, because right next to the entrance, I've got this inspection chamber stroke manhole, which really, really needs some attention before it gets any worse. <sighs> So this is definitely not the best place for a manhole or an inspection chamber, right next to the entrance. And it sort of gets covered in gravel, which means lorry drivers can't see it and they just go straight over it. The way it's failed and the direction it's failed, I would very much guess that it was that skip lorry that I had in a couple of weeks ago when I cleared the barn. Um, and to be fair, it was probably covered with gravel, so the guy just drove right over it. But it's just not designed to take that sort of load. So really, I need to upgrade it as well as change it. First of all, I'm just going to take some measurements and just see how much gravel has fallen down the sewer. This is officially an inspection chamber, not a manhole. The only difference between the two is a manhole is bigger and, well, you can get a man down it, or a woman. Both can be used to clean out the drain that runs through the bottom. And this one is the last in a series of chambers around these two properties that feeds into the sewer in the road. <sighs> Nasty. I assume that's some sort of standard size, I would guess. Where's that? 480 across, maybe 500 on the outside. There wasn't much gravel that had fallen down into the chamber, but to stop it anymore, the first thing I do is to plug the hole with an old bulk bag from a sharp sand delivery. As well as the cover breaking, the top level of the manhole also seems to be lower than normal, because I've noticed some gravel collecting on top of it. So I think it may have collapsed a touch as well. These plastic chambers are made up from a preformed chamber base at the bottom with a plastic chimney type thing, mine's a couple of metres in height, then a riser piece at the top that carries the frame and the cover. And this seems to have also failed and been pushed down into the chimney as well. It's all a little bit Heath Robinson though. I'm not a drainage expert, but it looks too lightweight to me. This. I think is something that probably can take about one and a half tonne, which is fine for a car on a drive, but not necessarily good enough if you're going to have deliveries from Travis Perkins and Skips turning up and stuff like that. So I think I need to find something suitable or more suitable to replace this. And I think it needs a bit of concrete and the whole thing just beefing up and making stronger. So I've taken a couple of measurements time to buy some materials. The most common sort of products you see in the shops are these plastic inspection covers, which really aren't that strong at all. And they're generally rated as one and a half tonne, which is fine for a car or an inspection cover around the back of your house, but not where it may well be trafficked by something a lot heavier. So I ended up settling on a ductile iron cover, which is actually classed B125, which is 125 kilonewtons, which is 12 and a half tonne, which potentially means a 50 tonne sort of lorry could come in here with one of its wheels on it and it wouldn't be a problem. However, it's not quite that straightforward. I've got the distinct impression that the plastic that makes up the chimney of the inspection chamber is rated to the same as the cover, which is one and a half tonne, which means even if I put a stronger cover on the top, the next thing that will fail is a chimney because it's just not rated to the same as the new cover. So what I intend to do is to dig around the chimney, put a reinforced concrete ring around it that the manhole cover is sitting on in such a way that when load is applied to the cover, it transfers into the ground around it rather than just that plastic tube. Anyway, that's a theory. 
So to contain the concrete that I'm going to be putting around the inspection chamber, I need some support for it. And as it's going to follow the round cover and be circular, I decide a couple of rings of ply should do the job. I make the inside of the ring 100 millimetres bigger than the cover using my circle marking trick. I can then easily cut this out with a jigsaw. I'm using 12 millimetre ply here as I have some available. And the great thing about plywood is as the ply layers are glued in different directions, it means unlike normal timber, it's got strength in all directions, which is exactly what you need when restraining a circular lump of wet concrete. With one cut, I can use it as a template for the second. To also help restrain bursting type forces that this is going to have on it when a load is applied, I want a couple of rings of reinforcement in the concrete to also give it some extra strength. So I bend 10mm rebar on my vise into a ring shape, offering it up regularly to my ply so I can get the right diameter. Here I couldn't find my clear safety glasses, so I did my best Ray Charles impression to cut an extra section to make up the ring. This I just tie together with some wire, although not having the proper rebar time wire does make it more difficult using the heavy gauge wire that I do have. Before I set up my cover for concrete, I need to dig down deeper into the compacted type one that's underneath the gravel on the drive. This material is a totally different colour, so I don't want to contaminate it, so I carefully put it in a wheelbarrow. Isn't it annoying when you end up doing completely the opposite of what you are trying to achieve? Anyway, I scoop up as much as I can of the Type 1 and get it back in the wheelbarrow. And a little tip here for separating two types of stone on your drive. Just spread it around with your foot a bit in great escape fashion and hope no one notices. The sub base I collect, I temporarily put in a mini bulk bag just to store it for the time being. These bags I'm using more and more these days to store stone and to move materials about. They're the same as bulk bags, but just smaller, so potentially you can carry them. And they've got an additional handle on the bottom, which comes in handy. I buy them from Amazon, so I'll put an Amazon link in the description below. With more dug out, I can remove the old riser and see how my new one that isn't actually designed to fit this one fits or not. Anyway, I cut it down with my angle grinder so it's a nice large flat base to it. I'm not sure if I'm supposed to be using a steel or concrete disc for cutting plastic, but I end up using a stone grinding disc to smooth it out, which sort of works, but in a grinding type melting plastic type way. As my existing chamber top is not level, I put some tape at the right height so I can cut a level top. These tape marks I just join up with a bit of spray paint and then cut the chimney to this line. I compact the formation I've got to and put back some more type 1 and compact again so I've got a good base for the concrete.
Before I place the manhole or inspection chamber, should I say, lid and frame, I stick on a ring of Gorilla Tape, which I tear at intervals so I can lap it down and out of the way, which means that when I put the frame on, this will hopefully seal and stop any concrete seeping through that joint into the drain. I was intending to use a ring of silicon here, but then realized that it's just about impossible to get the tube and the skeleton gun either inside the chamber or outside the chamber in this small excavation at the right angle. To hold the rebar rings in place, I drive some more rebar into the ground vertically around the chimney and then cut them to length. This, I can then tie the rings to. So hopefully with this rebar fixed in place, becomes a little bit more obvious where it's going. All I need to do now before concreting is to put like the outside shutter on. And this is what I've cut these ply rings for to give it a bit of strength. And for the actual shutter, I'm gonna be using quite a thick plastic. This is bamboo root control plastic, and it's about a millimetre thick, so it's quite heavyweight. And what I'm thinking is if that goes around the outside, supported on the inside, supported by a couple of these discs, then concrete, as it pushes out, may bulge it a little bit, but it won't blow at all. So this is like the last bit before some concrete. This bamboo plastic is quite expensive at around £7.50 per linear metre. But rather than buying a big roll of it in the DIY store, I found that I can buy it per metre, cut to length, at my local garden centre. Now I know the depth of the shutter, the ply rings I made earlier, I can now connect together with some battens, which makes a sort of short cylinder that the plastic can fit into and be restrained by. So, there we go. So that is my shutter. For strength, I'm using a three to one concrete mix here, which will hopefully stand up to vehicle traffic. I got through two batches of concrete here, pokering them in between to get good compaction. For the second batch, I actually managed to run out of material for but I stole some from my neighbour, who's also been making some concrete, so things worked out fine.
So 24 hours later, I've come back to the chamber and struck the shutter. And also removed the plastic around the outside, which means I can dress the surface of the concrete and knock off any bits that shouldn't be there. I can then backfill with the Type 1 that I put aside earlier. And bring back the stones from the driveway around it. And you'll notice I've also put a coat of hammerite on it just to make it look new. So I'm sure I've got the smartest manhole cover in the village. So that is that complete. I barricaded it so nothing drives over it for probably about another week, just so I've got some decent strength on that concrete before anything hits it. So I hope you enjoyed this video. That is a good job done. So I will see you next time.